Mr. Wilson, uh, thank you very much for coming and uh, for the beginning, would you please tell us something about uh, your background, uh, your formation and uh, the beginnings? Yes, um, I am, as you know, Australian. I studied or finished my studies and graduated in London in 1974 at the Architectural Association. I was, I think, very lucky to land in London at that moment in time when the Architectural Association was a, a hotbed of research. Um, it was a school where um, da Daniel Liebeskin was teaching, where um, Zaha Hadid was a few years behind me. I was a student of Ilya Zengelis, who was the teacher and then partner of Rem Koolhaas in the first formation of OMA. Then when I finished my studies, I was an assistant for Ilya Zengelis and Rem Koolhaas. I think the first year Rem Koolhaas um, was, was, was teaching. I went on then to, be, to run my own group uh, unit at the Architecture Association for, until the mid-late 80s as a teacher. I was a very long time an academic. Um, the AA at that time was a very important school in the world of architecture in terms of re, I think reformulating, repositioning the direction of architecture after 68, the political disillusionment of, um, of a whole generation after the collapse of functionalism, of logical positivism. Everyone was looking for new, new direction. The AA at the time under the leadership of Alvin Boyarsky, the then chairman, a lot of different people came together and were all researching. We've all now gone in different directions, but that, I think, was a particular moment in time. We were also, I must say, at that time, very interested in what was happening in Italy, um, Architettura Radicale, as um, the things happening in Florence. Since 1980, I've been working with my now wife, Julia Bollas wilson Professor Julia Bollas wilson who was a postgraduate student at the AA um, uh, at that time, um, a student also of Rem Koolhaas. We now we formed a, an office in 1980. We moved our office from London to Germany in 1987 after winning the competition for the City Library in Münster. This was one of our first built projects. We had an, an, another life before that as theoretical architects. Um, curiously, I was at the age of 25, um, known almost world, worldwide for my drawings. So I'm now living through a different phase where, where, where we are known for our buildings. I think this is a very long and slow maturing process, but architecture is something which one doesn't learn overnight. So we were very lucky to have, to have this, this early phase of, of research. And then luckily, or very luckily, with our move to Germany, we, 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 we moved from teaching to practice. And since we've been in Germany, after the City Library in Münster, we've had a continuous stream of, sort of large and quite prestigious projects. Mr. Wilson, why do we work uh, in Münster? Is it an especially stimulating environment there? Almost the opposite. Münster is like the eye of the storm. <laughs> Münster is, in, in Germany, very well located. We can be in Hamburg, we can be in, in, in Cologne or in, 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 in Berlin in one and a half hours. We have a lot of projects now in Holland. I can drive to Holland in, in, in two and a half hours. On the other hand, Münster is a very, very sort of quiet place. It, it, it's a small, very civilized university city. We build regularly in Münster, but most of our work is actually spread around Europe. Holland, England now, um, a lot in Germany and, and, and now Italy. And also we have built in, in Japan. Most of your buildings uh, reflect the environment. How do you get from the idea to the drawings? In doing a, pre a building, one has a many influences. One is, there's the, 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 there's the traditional list of influences, the program of requirements, a very specific list, what the client wants. There's the information one brings with one as an architect, one's understanding of the history of architecture, the moment we are at and, and what new questions there are for architecture. And then there's the most important issue, the place, the place where this new building will, will land, will, will, will be integrated into. I think one takes, or we take play, the, the place very seriously in our work. We, we actually look very closely. We actually intuit, we feel, we try to find the grain of the particular place. At the same time, we are aware that when one puts a new building in a place, one makes an, a, a new place, that buildings are sites, they, they become their site. After 10 or 15 years, people think of the building as always being there. It, it is grounded, it becomes part of the landscape. 
I think this responsibility as an architect in making places, in making places which people are comfortable in, in being in, 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 which don't mm, appeal, first of all, to the intellect, but which actually appeal to the senses, which have a sort of, have an aura. This is a curious, it becomes almost mystical to say words like aura, but I think for us th these are non-intellectual, these are sensual qualities we, we try to build into our architecture. We can't quite say how we do it because if, if we could say how, we, we would be critics or, or, or theoreticians. We, um, our medium is architecture, so we hope the buildings we, 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 we make have, have qualities, are, are places of particular character. I think in the case of the library in Münster, our first large public building, um, one of the most important lessons we've learned in architecture is watching that building in use. It is now 10 years old. It is enormously well used. The number of people taking, borrowing books from that library is, is, is way above any prediction. Um, it's, I think it's n number two on, from 170 libraries in, in Germany in terms of user popularity. It's, this is simply, I think, because it, 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 it is a comfortable building to be in. It, it, it has a character. It has a friendliness. I, I can't quite tell you how, how we, how we manage that. It's a, it's a sort of signature of our work. The facets of your buildings are very important. Uh, do you want to stimulate curiosity by that? The Library of Münster is quite complex because of its situation. It is in the old historic city. The Münster was damaged very seriously in the war, but the street pattern is still a medieval street pattern. We wanted to break down the monolithic character of a public building into smaller components. We were also, in some in our earlier researchers, interested in the idea of reading architecture and architecture, um, architecture parlant. Um, I think this idea of architecture as text doesn't interest us so much now. We more believe now that architecture is experienced s subliminally. One feels good in a building. One, one simply leads one's life well in a good building. One, one doesn't stand in front of it and say, "Wow, this is a great building." I think buildings which do that are. Uh, short, short-lived effects, and we are trying to do buildings which are, which are good and comfortable and and quali uh, qualitative backgrounds for 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 life. The, the library in Munster is is actually it is very complex. Maybe because it was our first large building, we put all the ideas in. We have collected had collected over the years. It had a lot of criticism in Germany because the Germans, German architects, always or usually look for a very clear, very simple, rational concept. And the, the compositional strategy we use in Münster is, is more one of, of multiplicity, of, of, of pieces each, each with their own language. That was done intentionally there. I think maybe after our 14 years practicing in Germany, we are becoming a little bit more <laughs> German. Would you please tell us something about the uh, materials and colors in your work? Uh, materials. I think the materials of building is made from, is, it's a, a, an area of permanent research. One is always looking for new materials, but there are some materials which one always comes back to. One of them is, is, is wood. I think wood is a material, it has a haptic quality. When one touches it, one, it, 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 it has a warmth. It has an optical quality as well. I think a, a room with, with a certain proportion of wood is always, always a comfortable room. When we use steel, we use a lot of steel for staircase handrails, or um, we, we don't actually expose steel for structure in buildings very often. Steel is an interesting material for us. In Germany, there is still very good craftsmen who can work with steel, so we can achieve a very high quality of, st of steel detail. Um, this is something which luckily exists in Germany. It doesn't exist anymore in Holland or in, 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 in England, so we, are, we may be a little bit sort of craft-oriented in that sense. Um, we have just done a, a, our first building with a stone facade, which we, where we imported a stone from Brazil, and it came, of course, via Italy, via Carrara, to be cut and polished. Stone is, of course, a wonderful, very solid material. Um, it, it has a whole different duration, a, 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 dis, a different um, relationship to time. We also do facades in quite modern, quite artificial materials, which, depending on the care with which one details them, one can also give them a certain dignity. Um, metal facades or, or even, even fiber cement with some material which is normally considered the cheap material. If, in the case of the Luxor Theatre, we treated that or treated fiber cement almost like the planks of a, of a small rowing boat, but at a bigger scale. 
I think that the material is always a, a, something which one wants to move forward with, to experiment in a different way. Um, for us, the, the role of material is one uh, is a sensual one. It, it, it is a signifier of the quality of the building. We often, um, often between the rich materials, we have large white areas, abstract areas. White plaster for us means uh, to um, read the building here in an abstract sense, in a modernist sense. Um, in our projects in Germany or in Holland, we unfortunately cannot use stucco lustre. We, we don't have the craftsman you, one still finds in, in, in Italy. I, I hope one still finds in Italy. Um, in terms of color, we use sometimes bright colors. Uh, more often our color sense is influenced by our, our experiences in, in Japan. Um, I like very much the, sh the colors, sh um, shadow colors, also muddy, earthy colors of Japan, um, muted blues. Um, one thinks in terms of, of those colors also in terms of, um, I think it's Tanzanaki, his book, In Praise of Shadows. Uh, and he writes about j the Japanese sensibility for, for half-lights where um, gold gold becomes um, very bright, ref reflecting a little bit of light from a window, or where a blue becomes very deep like 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 water. Um, we see colors also as, as, as sensual fields. Please tell us something about uh, the materials you used for your latest project, the Biblioteca di Milano. I think there's been a great misunderstanding about the materials in the Biblioteca di Milano. We produced for the competition some computer drawings which, where we did not glue on wallpaper materials as one often does with a computer drawing. We simply left them as mass studies, which made it look like a shiny metal box. And um, some people said it's high tech, it doesn't fit Milan. It is not, it is not our intention to do a shiny metal box. In fact, we have, we have yet to start working in detail on the actual material language. I could tell you much more about the materials of the inside than the outside. On the inside, there will be, I think, a very high proportion of wooden panels. In our library in Munster, we also use wooden panels with, which are, um, um, acoustic panels to absorb sound. A, a library must also feel from the sound quality like a library. Um, our intention with the, with the BIAC is with this very large salon, almost the size of a railway station waiting hall. Um, the, um, Porto Vittoria was a, a, originally a railway station. We would like this to be, a, um, a landscape-like space where one can see lots of other activities happening, but still have, has a certain intimacy to do with the materials and to do with, to do with sound qualities. The outside, we have our large wrapping skin, or, or it's quite a large scale. The, 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 the BIAC is also, um, and we, we called it a vehicle of culture or a vessel of culture. It is an object which has to, it has to have a presence in the city, not only physically in the city of Milan, but also, um, regionally for the whole of Lombardy. It, 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 it is a, sort of a, um, media, a house of media for everyone. And one, one has to have an, 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 an image, a singular image of a very identifiable image there. For this reason, we, 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 we did this, wrapping hull, hull-like form, hull is a boat shape, upside down boat. Um, whether, uh, how much metal we use in, in the outside is not yet decided. I, if we use metal at all, I would like it to be more a, a, a dull metal, a, a metal with a, a patina. Um, we have also large glass areas for the reading rooms, which will obviously have um, sun shading on the outside to a certain layering of the facade. We have um, a ground plane, which I think is a very important material surface in the Berg. The ground plane slopes up from, or from both sides. The Berg is enterable from the city side and from the, um, um, outside of the city, the new sports fields and, and, and cultural, um, cultural functions to the, to the east. The ground plane is, is like a, something halfway between a, a garden and a piazza. I think it's too big just to pave, so we also have Grass plains, almost leading, leading um, the, the, a park-like surface up into the, into the, into the interior spaces of the Berg. We lifted the ground plane or ramped the ground plane up to, um, in, in a way, to reduce the volume of the whole building. We've put, I think, almost one third of our functions underneath the ground. This is the conference center, um, media tech, children's library, also, which then opens out to it, its own sort of private, um, intimate garden. Um, one must say. We have, we have won the competition for the BIAC. We are now just starting to work seriously on it. For us, working seriously on a project means um, a whole level of research um, of developing particular materials for a particular project. So 
I can give you a, a sketch of the of the bed now. I I can't tell you e exactly where, um, what the front door will be made from or e exactly how the facade will be detailed. You are working in Germany. You come from Australia. You studied in England, and uh, you have projects all over Europe. What's uh, the main difference between uh, the different countries uh, you're working and uh, the people you're working with? Yeah, I think maybe I'm one of the um, most qualified um, expatriates in the world. I, being a, a born in Australia, I I know the English speaking world very well, or, and, and um, English culture, the English speaking culture is is my native speaking culture. I feel myself very much now as a, a, a European with my um, a German wife. We we speak English or German in, with our family. I like very much working in Germany for the exactitude of, of, of the Germans, this, the, the, this precision in detail or the methodo methodology of, 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 of problem solving, of getting to the point. I can see also shortcomings there, that one misses certain poetic possibilities. Um, the English are very good with ambiguity. They like, the, the English love double meanings and never, never say ig, ig, exactly what their intentions are. This linguistic sliding from, from one subject to another is, I think, a very interesting cultural background. It's sometimes quite difficult for making decisions in a, in a, in a, in a business environment because everybody speaks in, in, in metaphors rather than, than in, in precise terms. Um, we are learning a little bit about, the Itali about Italian culture at the moment. We have also, I must say, a, a partner office in, in, in Milan, um, Alta Studio, a group of young architects here who are very much our go-betweens with the Italian environment. I can see very great sophistications in the, in the Italian ways of doing business. It's, it's not the front-on German system. This is something we are, we are learning at the moment. Um, I'm also trying at the moment to, my wife and I are learn, um, learning the Italian language and seeing also that it is a very subtle and very beautiful language. We have a lot, <laughs> a lot further to go there. Um, Italy, when, when Italy is, is, is always, I think, for other countries, uh, one sort of cultural reference. Not, not simply the, the, the historic cities of Italy, which for any architect or urbanist are a sort of, a, almost a starting point. I think also, um, as a, a way of understanding culture, um, Italo Calvino is for me one, a very important reference. Not just his, not only his book, Invisible Cities. Um, for me, his, some of his very last e essays, one on exactitude and one on multiplicity, prescribe for me almost the, the cultural extremes that, that I find, or we find ourselves oscillating between working in Europe, the exactitude of Germany or the multiplicity of, of the English, or I think even the multiplicity and, and the, the depth of Italian culture. I think this historic depth in, in Italy is something which one, one sees as being very, very valuable. And one is, of course, very, flattered and honored and a little bit nervous with having the possibility to add a, a, a new building to a city like Milan, a, a city with obviously a level of culture which, which, which one has enormous respect for. Apart the Biblioteca di Milano, what are your actual projects? Um, the Luxor Theatre in Rotterdam is, was, a, was a major cultural project for us, um, a theatre for 1,500 audience in the harbour area of Rotterdam. That opened a year and a half ago now, it's sort of operating very successfully. We've just finished a few months ago a very large project in Magdeburg in the former east of Germany. This is one side of the Cathedral Square of Magdeburg, also an area of great historic importance. It, I think the Cathedral in Magdeburg is the oldest Gothic cathedral in Germany. This is a city also with a very complex, sometimes tragic, sometimes um, Historically, very important ro um, role. Um, the d wartime destruction or the um, Stalinist reconstruction are very curious layers of the city to have to, to have to work on. Um, when, when one finds un underneath a, a Baroque plan or a Gothic cathedral, we have done two large blocks there with, um, with with stone facades. Our first stone facades, which are in a sense quite German, there they're almost like Berlin blocks, but they also have Boris Wilson sort of. Um, sub subplots. We are also working on, or have currently under construction, quite a large project in 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 Hamburg, a um, whole um, urban quarter where, where we've done the master plan. It's the area is Falconried. We are doing housing and offices there. 
we have at the moment a number of projects in Holland, um, a large shopping and cinema block in The Hague, um, in Amsterdam, a large, a large building, part of a, of a bigger building complex which actually stands in the water, in, in, the, in the river, not far from the railway station, like a new artificial island in, in, in the middle of the city. A lot of smaller projects also. I'm listing the, 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 the larger, the grander works, but we also do, um, smaller buildings, um, commercial buildings, shops, um, residential buildings. Not always in, in important historic contexts, often in, 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 in the periphery, in, in the sort of non-structured edges of cities today. The subject of the, the, the evolution of cities or the, the, the devolution of cities into an, an urbanized field is something we have been researching for a long time and interests us very much. What is the project you would like to realize most in the future? Ah, the Bayek in Milan. This is, a, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. Mr. Wilson, thank you very much uh, for coming, for joining us, for uh, offering your time. And uh, we also want to thank the Goethe Institute Mailand and the Triennale. Mm, thank you.